Spoiler alert. The movie begins with Emma in a car. While driving, she remembers the moment she broke up with her lover Tom, a lawyer who works for her husband. The next day, we see her arriving at his office. As it's her wedding anniversary, his secretary gives her flowers. She receives them and heads to the office of Mark, her husband, a very successful criminal lawyer who makes a lot of money setting criminals free. While waiting for him, she notices some confidential documents on the table. When she opens them, she discovers that it is a dossier on an attempted robbery that she suffered and was seriously injured when she reacted. Mark arrives and she stops reading the document and hides the photo of the criminal called Bobby, who ended up slipping when she closed the folder. He comments that he thought she'd wear red, as it's her favorite color, and says that before they go to dinner, she'll have time to change, showing that he's very controlling. Mark realizes that she was reading the document. Emma asks about the dossier and Mark replies that they are revoking his attacker's parole. After that, they take the elevator and, on the floor below, Tom enters. He pretends not to know Emma. Then Mark introduces the two of them, but she says that they already know each other from the Christmas party, but Mark says that it wasn't the Christmas party, but the New Year's Eve party. The elevator opens and Emma gets out, but her husband calls her back because it was the wrong floor. Tom says goodbye and leaves. Back at the restaurant after dinner, Mark presents Emma with a necklace to celebrate 11 years of marriage. Emma returns the gesture by giving her husband tickets to his team's match, but he doesn't accept because his team is in a bad run and leaves the tickets in the restaurant. As they leave, Mark tells Emma to look in his coat pockets. She finds a blindfold. Blindfolded, Emma is taken by her husband to a country house they used to go to when they were dating. There, he surprises her. Emma begins to follow the candles scattered around the house and finds a card with a declaration of love on the table. She continues to follow the candles and notices the lamp swinging outside and decides to lock the door. After that, she enters a room full of photos of the couple's happy moments. She turns on a record with a note. The record starts playing a romantic song, she likes the music and then goes upstairs full of candles and rose petals. She finds Mark in the bedroom with two glasses of champagne. They talk and Mark admits that he hasn't been a good husband, but says he wants to restore their marriage. They then kiss and become intimately involved. The next day, when Emma wakes up, Mark is already awake, sitting up in bed. He asks her how she's feeling. She says she's cold and hungover. Then she realizes that she's handcuffed. Emma questions Mark, but he looks at her says it's time to wake up and gives up on life. She gets desperate and tries to remove the handcuff, but can't. She tries to call the police, but the phone is switched off. Emma then takes the revolver that Mark used and starts trying to get rid of the handcuff, but again she can't because Mark used the only ammunition he had in the gun. After that, she decides to go to the closet and finds her wedding dress on a hanger. Shortly afterwards, Emma realizes that there is a safe behind her dress. She then uses the dress to drag the corpse out more easily. While trying to go down the stairs, Emma loses her balance and ends up falling with Mark. After recovering a little from the fall, she looks for her cell phone, but finds it inside a completely waterlogged vase. She tries to turn it on, but it's damaged. She then goes into the kitchen and searches through the drawers until she finds the trash can. Rummaging through it, she finds her car keys. With that, her hopes are renewed. She wraps her feet with the dress and trudges through the snow to the car. With great difficulty, she manages to get Mark into the vehicle, but when she starts it, the car stops working because it's out of gas. Then a romantic song starts playing and a message from Mark is played. In the recording, he says that he was surprised that she had come so far. He goes on to say that she was ungrateful, because when he met her, 
Emma was just a failed photographer and that he only regrets not being there. He also makes it clear that he already knew about the betrayal and says that he didn't do it all because of her, as he had other problems too. Mark jokingly ends the recording by wishing her a happy wedding anniversary. Emma returns to the main house and wipes her face. She tries to remove the necklace, but can't. After that, she goes down to the basement, but also finds nothing that can help. She gets angry and starts saying that Mark was a big hypocrite, because he was also unfaithful. She goes back upstairs and enters the photo room. Emma comes across images of her with her lover, as well as photos from the period when she was mugged. She is startled when she sees a large photograph of her attacker on the wall. When she turns on the light, she notices a record player with a note that reads, Play me. When she turns it on, a recording of her statement is played and she has a flashback of what happened and ends up getting nervous. Then she hears someone approaching and before the door is fully open, she manages to lock it. But it was Tom. She opens the door a little and Tom explains that he was there after receiving several messages from her, but Emma explains that she didn't send him any messages. Tom notices that her clothes are dirty with blood, so Emma decides to open the door. He is startled by what he sees. After Emma explains the situation, Tom reveals that Mark was being investigated for manipulating evidence in several cases, and she realizes that Mark planned the whole thing, since his career was ruined. Tom starts planning what they're going to say to the police, but Emma prefers to call the authorities straight away and tell them the truth. They start arguing and Tom says that their situation would be complicated by having been lovers. When he finally decides to call the police, he realizes that his cell phone isn't with him and that he had left it in his vehicle charging. When he decides to go and get it, he spots a car approaching and asks if she recognizes him. She says she doesn't. He then comments that he had passed the car that was stopped on the roadside. Emma says that it would be better if they both ran away, but Tom says that she wouldn't be able to because she's trapped in her body, so he tells her that it's better if she stays inside the house. The car arrives and a man called Jimmy, claiming to be a plumber, approaches. He says he's been hired to fix a leak. Tom says there's no one in the house and suggests he come back another time. But the man insists. Tom offers to pay for the service. Jimmy accepts, but asks to come in because he needs to use the bathroom. Tom doesn't accept and insists that the man leave, when suddenly another man gets out of the car. Tom says he had called the police, but that doesn't stop the man, whose name is Bobby. Jimmy asks him not to do anything, but he approaches and attacks Tom. They enter the house and Jimmy is extremely frightened, as he says that what was agreed was for them to scare him and not kill him. What's more, he says that the police have been called, but Bobby reassures his brother that if he had called the police, they would have listened in on the radio. After that, they go out looking for Emma. Bobby climbs the stairs and reaches the bedroom where he finds the safe. Meanwhile, Jimmy is still looking for Emma. He starts to follow the trail of blood left in the snow, which leads in the direction of the cabin by the lake. Then we see Emma, as Jimmy approaches, she tries to separate herself from her husband's body. When the criminal enters the hut, he doesn't see her because she's hiding under some tarpaulins. Jimmy is startled by the body and runs out. He returns to the cabin with his brother. Bobby notices Mark's hand resting on the boat and removes the tarpaulin, but Emma has already hidden elsewhere. At that moment, she realizes that one of the criminals was the one who had attacked her years ago, and overhearing their conversation, Emma learns that they have now been hired by Mark. They leave the hut and Emma takes the opportunity to wrap her feet again. They return home and try to find a way to open the safe, but realize that it only opens with a number combination and a fingerprint. They just don't know if it's Emma's fingerprint or Mark's. So Bobby tells Jimmy to go and get Mark's fingerprint. 
he decides to go even though he's upset. Meanwhile, Emma is dragging a gallon of fuel and narrowly misses Jimmy. She manages to get to the garage and starts to fill up the car, but she makes a noise and this attracts Bob. She manages to hide. However, he punctures the vehicle's tires to prevent Emma from escaping. She manages to get out of the garage without being seen and enters the basement. Bobby also decides to enter the basement and Emma is left with no way out, because when he starts to climb the stairs, it attracts his brother's attention. He thinks it's Emma, but she manages to set off the car alarm and this creates a distraction that allows her to escape. While the two of them are in the garage, she takes the opportunity to go where Tom is. She mourns his death and looks in his pockets, hoping to find his car keys. Meanwhile, Jimmy asks his brother to let Emma escape, but he insists that he wants revenge for being imprisoned for more than ten years. They decide to trap Emma. Bobby locks the basement exit and tells his brother to go out the back door, while he goes out the front door. When they get to Tom's body, Jimmy notices that he's missing his shoes. So Bobby decides to look in the attic. He approaches a chair and pulls back the sheet, thinking that Emma is hiding there. However, she surprises him and attacks him with a baseball bat. He falls out of the attic unconscious. She takes advantage and takes Tom's car key. When Jimmy goes to see what has happened, he is surprised by Emma. She locks him in one of the bedrooms and heads for the car. However, before she can start the car, Bob appears, breaks the window and pulls Emma out of the car while he pulls her out. She manages to get Tom's cell phone and calls the police. The call is answered and Emma screams for help. The criminal takes the cell phone and ends the call. Jimmy shows up and tries to convince his brother to give up, but can't. Then he says he's out, but Bob threatens him. He then erases Emma and when she wakes up, she is again handcuffed to Mark's body. He brings the safe to her to open, but she says she doesn't know the combination. He threatens to cut off her fingers. Jimmy tries to stop his brother, but is thrown away. As he falls, he notices the gun under the bed, the same one Mark had used, and decides to threaten his brother. He orders Bobby to get away from Emma and drop the knife. Jimmy then asks her to give him the combination to the safe so that he can leave her alive. She decides to hand over the combination on the condition that the handcuffs are removed. After a brief discussion, they agree and she tells them the combination. They manage to open it but in the safe they only find a saw where it is written that all the diamonds are close to her heart. Emma realizes it was the necklace she was wearing, but she says she can't get it off. The criminal concludes that Mark had planned this because he wanted them to kill her. Jimmy tries to remove the necklace with pliers in an attempt to save her life. Bobby takes advantage of Jimmy's distraction and attacks him. He then points the gun at Emma and pulls the trigger, but the gun is out of ammunition. She then tries to grab the knife, but Bobby manages to stop her. Her brother Jimmy wakes up and tries to stop his brother again, but ends up being finished off by accident. Emma takes advantage and grabs a knife to defend herself. The criminal swears that she won't make it out alive, because he blames her for her brother's death. They start to fight and Emma defends herself as best she can. She takes a stab in the leg, but manages to attach it to Mark's body and limps out of the room. He tries to reach her, but falls down the stairs. She manages to get into the car, but the man continues to chase her. She reverses and hits other vehicles. Then she accelerates and runs over the criminal. The car slides in the snow and ends up crashing into a hut. Bobby, who wasn't hurt, goes to the car to get Emma, but she's crawling across the frozen lake. He goes after her and catches up. Bobby tries to finish her off, but misses. Then he starts to choke her, but Emma manages to get free, kicking him in the face and hitting him with the knife. 
Just then the ice breaks and Mark's body pulls Bob to the bottom of the lake. He manages to grab Emma and drag her down with him. However, she manages to reach the knife in Bob's chest and uses it to free herself from him. After almost fainting, she manages to break the ice with the knife. And so the movie ends, with Emma removing her wedding ring and the sounds of sirens in the background, indicating that the police were coming. That was today's summary. Leave your thoughts on the movie in the comments and if you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.